everybody. I wanted to run through the test that I gave you um, in case any of you want retakes. And I just wanted to say just one small thing. Um, I also gave you a um, like a formula sheet kind of guide, um, a review to actually help you. I'll actually drop it into this document here. And there was a lot of things I noticed that people sort of just straight up ignored on the exam. Um, so for example, the impulse momentum theorem is useful when I give you a force and a time and there's only one object. And conservation momentum is when two masses hit each other. And I saw a lot of people in this exam. Um, you got two objects and you're not using the formula that applies to uh, two objects. Um, so I'm going to run through just the solutions here. Um, and I know a lot of you may want to retake this on Tuesday, so I want to make sure that I get to this. And I'll, um, when I get this recorded, I'll be sending out a um, text to all of you. Of course, you'll be watching this after you've received the text, so chronologically this sounds weird. So here we go. A rifle recoils while firing a bullet. The impulse that acts on the rifle um, is going to be... Um, to be really clear, um, the impulse that acts on the rifle should be exactly equal to that on the bullet. And since impulse is the change in momentum, I'm also going to say the change, that's what delta means, in momentum is also equal for both. So now let's look at the choices. Um, the impulse is not large or small. These are trick answers based on, I'm going to be honest, I gave you the practice test and I know that um, the, the recoil velocity of the rifle is small because of its mass, but we're not asking about recoil velocity anymore, we're asking about impulse. And by Newton's third law, those two things should be equal, so this is false. Um, its individual momentum is unchanged, yes, the total if this said total momentum, that would have been okay, but we didn't talk about total momentum. We were only talking about the rifle alone. So it actually turns out this is the one time in physics where the correct choice is E. None of these. Now, we're going to uh, drop one ball and it lands like this, and then we'll have a second ball that falls and then bounces back up. So the uh, chain, So what's true? Well, when we bounce, we definitely have a greater change in momentum uh, because here we have mv and this becomes zero, whereas here we have mv and then it bounces back at negative mv. So the momentum change here is 2mv versus plain old mv because this is going to be mv minus negative mv. Sorry, it's negative mv going down and plus mv going up. And here this is negative mv, and so we get, yes. So we have a change of mv in this momentum and 2mv in this momentum when it bounces. So we have a greater change in momentum. Uh, if we have a greater change in momentum, well, remember, mo impulse is the change in momentum. Um, I'll write that shorthand, f delta t equals mv final minus mv initial. That's um, the change in momentum. And this is the impulse. So we also have a greater impulse given. So what that tells us, uh, we, don't, we, don't, we can't talk about the time of impact because we don't know. I don't know how bouncing works from one to the other. So all we can guarantee is that choice D is in fact correct. Now here, a one kilogram chunk of putty sticks to a one kilogram bowling, uh, five meters per second sticks a bowling ball. Um, the magnitude and momentum of both of them together, I changed the numbers, but this is essentially the same problem. I literally, I changed the one here to a five, and I think a lot of people just circled B because they kind of memorized an answer but didn't understand what was going on. Now, this one here, this one really required you to use the reasoning behind momentum. So the total momentum, we've got a little piece of clay, we've got a bowling ball. So let's look at this. We've got one, we've got a momentum of one kilogram, meter per second. You know what, let me just move all this a little bit over so I have some room to write. There we go. And then what's going to happen is they're going to hit and stick together. So let's be clear. They hit and stick. The total is still one kilogram meter per second of this whole 
everything combined. That means some of the momentum is here and some of it's here. So the total is one, which means that for the bowling ball alone, it's got to have less than one because some of it's in this little piece of putty. So it adds up to a total of one, but each individual piece has less than one when they hit and stick. So again, you can't just read and memorize the answers. You've really got to understand that reasoning. Okay, so an egg hits concrete and breaks. Another identical egg dropped from the same height hits a trampoline and bounces back at the original speed it hit with. It doesn't break, which Greg, egg has a greater impulse, and why? So you would think the one that breaks has a greater force, but that actually isn't it. Um, this isn't true either. Um, yes, it might have had a greater force on it, but it actually turns out choice C is the correct choice. It bounces back up, and that means it had a greater change in momentum. Um, and so it goes back up at the same speed. So even though it didn't break, the impulse is bigger, even though the force is less. Um, and we can't. And, and it actually turns out the one that bounces had less of a force on it. It's just the time was so long for the bouncing that it ended up getting more impulse. The momentum change in the object is equal to the impulse. If you didn't get C correct, um, ooh, this was I didn't even change this from the practice test. This one here, um, I think I changed the word force to impulse, or I might have changed the word change momentum, but I kept this one essentially the same. It turns out the impulse should be the same by Newton's third law. Now, in a head-on collision between two objects with unequal mass, um, it's not that the velocity is the same. Um, the momentum of one will increase by the same amount of the momentum of the other decreases. In other words, the change in momentum is equal and opposite. The total momentum of the system will actually remain the same, so choice E is correct. Again, this one I left unchanged. It's the bouncing that gives the greater momentum. And here there are no exceptions to the change in momentum rule. That was something that I put on the practice test. So that's D. Didn't change that one. So here, we got to be really careful. Let's talk about a chicken egg. We're going to have it um, fall to the ground at negative 20.0 meters seconds is the speed that it hits at. Meters per second is the speed it hits at. Downwards is negative. I saw a lot of people forget this negative sign. So a lot of you got like 0 0.315 or 3.15 or something like that. And then it bounces back up at 15. And we want the force. Other things I noticed. This is M. This is V initial. This is the time. This is V final. I saw a lot of people. I have told you for a whole semester, you've got to get these units memorized. And... A lot of you don't have those memorized and you're paying the price and you tell me I don't know what's going on when you clearly have a formula with everything labeled and if you knew that this was Newton's that this was seconds that this is kilograms that this is meters per second that this is kilograms and that this is meters per second the problem kind of solves itself so um, on the one hand, I hear that it, we did this unit pretty quickly, but on the other hand, it's on you to have prerequisite skills in place to be able to learn these things a little bit faster as the year evolves. we got to pick up the pace. Um, this is a college prep class. So we've got the force, and we're going to times it by the time, which is 0 0.1. And then we're going to have 0 0.063. The final is 20. Sorry, is 15. Minus 0 0.063 times, we've got the 20 here, and it's negative because it was going backwards. So when we actually solve this, I'm going to do a bit of algebra here. F, time, F is going to be equal to 0 0.063 times 35, a little bit of distributive property there that I'm going to let you figure out, divided by 0 0.1. So this ends up being 0 0.63 times 35, and it gives me about 22 newtons. Okay, so that was the thing. I'll just say one other thing here. A lot of people got 0 0.06, 0 0.63 times 5. A lot of you got 3.15 because you didn't account for this negative sign. So I'm just going to put this here. 3.15 newtons is wrong. 
just to be clear, okay? So now we got a small rocket. We want to know what the thrust should be to change the speed by 0.7 meters per second. Um, let's, so here we go. This is force. This is mass. This is actually the change in the speed. That's V final minus V initial is 0 0.7. A little, little twist there. I would expect you to be able to figure that out since we say the change in velocity. I have the right to be able to expect that. So 30 times time is going to equal 6,000 times 0 0.7. Here's the thing. Even if you just put this and wanted to have something here, you could have surmised that the second number would be 6,000 times 0 if you were lost if you'd learned your units. Okay, I have emphasized that quite a bit. So when we solve for the time, we're going to end up getting 200 times 0 0.7. That's going to give us 140 seconds. Next, um, we've got this ballistics test. Um, we got a potato. So here we go. Um, we've got this potato. It's got 0 0.34 kilograms. Um, we don't know its initial speed. This should say potato. And then we have this cart that rolls forward at 2 meters per second. Its mass is 5. And the potato, this is 5 kilograms. And then we have our potato rolling back. Um, and I'm going to be careful. you got to do this too. Negative 30. Please be careful with that because it's going backwards. I've said that quite a bit. And this is, again, 0 0.34. So now we set this up. M1, V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial equals M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. So we've got the potato going at its unknown speed. The cart isn't moving. So 0 0.34 times its unknown initial speed plus the 5 kilogram cart moving at 0 equals the potato moving backwards at 30 plus the cart moving forward at 2. And so as we continue this, we're going to end up getting here 0 0.34 V initial equals, um, so 0.34 times 30. I'm getting negative 10. Right, three times one is six. All right, so so okay, so negative um, point two is about ten point two. Okay, plus ten, so we're going to end up getting a v initial of about zero point five nine meters per second. I should have made the speed a little bit bigger, actually, and that's okay. Um, it actually, uh, there's a technicality to this, but we should have got about 0 0.59 meters per second when we combine this. Now, the 5 kilogram ball moving at 8 strikes something they hit and stick, so let's be clear. So we've got 5 kilograms. Sorry, I'm just going to put 0 0.34 VI equals 2, and we get about 0 0.59 here. 5 kilograms moving at 8 meters per second, and we have the 85 kilogram dude moving at 0. And then they hit and stick. So let's be clear. I've got 5 kilograms. So I've got here M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial equals M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. We've got a 5 kilogram object moving at 8. We've got an 85 kilogram object not moving. We have an 85 kilogram object moving at a final speed and a 5 kilogram move object moving at the same final speed because they roll together at the same speed. So that's going to give me 40 equal to 90 V. And when I solve for V, I'm going to get 0 0.44 meters per second. A lot of you put um, 0 0.4 repeating. I, I we're not in math class, so take it out to two decimal places. So that's the exam you took. I'm going to put these solutions on haiku. 
and I'm going to urge you strongly to study these if you want a retake.